Hello all the machine key enthusiasts, welcome to my second tutorial video about the signals. This time it will be focused on the chain signals. And uh, also I'd like to mention that after receiving some feedback from the first video, I've decided to separate those two languages. So this will be English only video. If some of you is interested in a Czech version, you can find it in my channel. Okay, so let's um, open some simulations and get into it. So what is a chain signal? The definition says that chain signal is green if at least one signals in the branches after it. It's green. If all the all the signals are red behind the behind the chain, the chain will be red as well. So obviously that offers a use uh, at the switch. So there is a chain signal in front of a switch and behind the switch all are red. Chain signal is red. If you let this train go to the off, for example, it behaves as designed. Once this turns green, the chain signal turns green and that is how it works. So let's see how it will work at the regular at the, at the real use. So you have a simple circuit uh, where there is uh, a lock station, the trains are coming for the wood. And then there oops, to the other one. And then there is a sawmill where there is a lumber train waiting to be loaded with the planks. So the first train arrives here, it has to unload the logs and because it's a longer train it takes the time so it occupies the station for a time and the next train comes and it's waiting at the decision point, at the, at the chain signal in front of the switch, there's the decision point and there is a rule which we have, uh, which has to be applied here and the rule says that the chain signal in front of the switch should be placed only if the train can choose any trucks coming out of the switch. First available any trucks. So here it is true, it's a two platform station, it doesn't matter where the train goes, so the first available the train will go there. Let's see how it works. This one finished unloading, it left. Yes, it turns green, the train goes there and start unloading. So now let's wait when the train comes back. I need it here. And I can see on many people's map one error which happens here quite often. So let's see that this station becomes very busy and you are sending lots of trains through that. And some trains don't need to stop there, but because it's a main track, they just need to pass through, but they still have to wait here and wait uh, until one of the platforms is available to get through. So what will everybody do, you and me? We will build a bypass. Right? It works. Now what happened here, because we will build a bypass, now suddenly the rule I just mentioned is not valid anymore, because this train cannot choose any available truck. It cannot choose any of the three. It can choose only one of these two, which means cannot choose any. So this chain signal now doesn't work as a decision point. Because here on the bypass, uh, there will be never red signal here. Why? There will be red shortly when some train is passing through, but once the train is gone, it will be green. So it will be virtually always green. So this chain signal will be virtually always green. Now, what happens when we start running this train? So let's have a look. Let's see, the train goes, but it couldn't, it didn't stop here at a decision point because there was no decision point, it was green light. And he stops at the first red light in his way, which is this one. It's a 50-50 chance which truck he will choose. So he will choose this truck in, in half of the cases. Now, what does it mean? This is a lumber train, it's not full, and it can never leave, because it's not full. And it cannot be full, because it needs 
raw locks to make the planks and a train with the raw locks is standing behind it. This platform became available, it's a green light, but this train cannot magically swap the trucks and go the other way. No, it has to stay here and the other one comes behind it and the whole station became blocked. Now you cannot do anything about it. I mean, you can, but this is just this is just wrongfully built switch. So the fix is as such. Let's stop this. You may not to build the, the station bypass from behind the entry chain signal. You always must build a station bypass from before the chain signal. Now it will work. So of course here we have to manually send this train away to clear this this traffic jam. So we just have to swap this so regardless of the full load. The train has to move. I have to start working. So this train goes away and thus this become available. So the train number seven can go there, make it faster. And the train number eight can go there. And now this chain signal again works as designed. Trains could choose any available from behind the chain signal. The bypass is ignored by the chain signal and the bypass will be used by trains who don't need to use the station. So that's how it works. I don't want this to leave. It goes there. Now it has to, now let's say it's unloading. The next one comes. It's going to prove the point that it works. It will stop at the decision point here. Once this finished unloading, leaves the station, truck becomes available. And the train goes in. So that's how it works. So again, make sure when you're building bypass around the busy stations, that the bypass starts in front of the chain signal of the decision point for the switch for the stations, not behind. That's just how it works. And then you will never have a trouble. All right. So uh, another, uh, and another use of the chain signals is at the intersections. Now it could be this simple inter this type of a simple intersection or crossings or any complex crossing. And of course here we can place uh, regular signals and it will work. This intersection, this crossing will work like this, especially if it is long stretch of the track, no stations, no traffic jam, it will work just fine. But let's imagine that you have a station here and some traffic jam happens. Then if you have a train occupying this area here, it will make a red signal here. But train coming here will have a green light on this one, crosses here, there is a red, and it blocks the crossing, and the train on the side track cannot go until this traffic jam clears. Now, how we can prevent it is to put the chain signal in front of the intersection of the crossing. So now, if there is the same train blocking this segment, this will be again red, but the chain signal will make will will be red as well because by the definition if this is red chain signal is red train coming from here will stop at this signal will not cross and a side track will become available i have a demonstration in a minute so don't worry if you don't understand you will see it uh, how it works what i want to show here first is that it doesn't have to be that simple crossing this quite complex crossing works as well with the same rules so the entry points to the intersection this is where the train enters i'm using a right hand driving of course it's up to you so the entry points let's make them all chain signal 
and the exit points will be all block signals. Now, here are, this is an entry point, obviously, it's not an exit point. Which signal should be here? And here? And here? Those should be block signals because here the rule doesn't apply. The train cannot choose any available trucks. It either has to go right or left, depends where it goes. It, it cannot choose simply wherever it wants because it has a it has a some route list so that's why here should be block signal if you put a chain signal here nothing will happen it will still be it, it will work as a block signal it will do nothing other than being a more expensive block signal so you just can use the cheaper block signal and be done with it because the chain signal here will have absolutely no use and here and there are those exit tracks from, from this little crossing. I didn't put any signals here. I will. There needs to be signal. Now, which one? No, that's a question. Either one will be good here. So I usually have a block signals there. But that's because I use this uh, T-shaped crossing in a, usually in a, in a long stretch of the, of the tracks, not close to the station. If you have a station here, and you expect some traffic jam on the exit route, like occasionally, then you would be better off with the with the chain signal here, like this. This will make the intersection as a whole work slower, but less prone to traffic jams. If you have a block signal here, the intersection will be a little faster for letting the trains go. But if there is a traffic jam behind it, it could cause that the train will just block the intersection. Now let's have some real life simulation here. So first I build the same T-shaped uh, crossings with only block signals. What will happen? There is a traffic jam, you know, train stopped at the station, something is happening there and next train is coming. So next train is coming, comes here, stops at the red light, obviously, which is here, and completely blocks the crossing for another train from the side road. Oops, sorry, my bad, I have a wrong signal here. Uh, happens. Uh, that's how it should be. So, but this train cannot go anywhere anyway because there is a red light, there is a train already in the crossings and it just doesn't work. So let's reverse the trains and see what happens if we change the signals. So here we go, the trains are back. Now what would happen if we do, as I just described, put the entry signals as a chain signals, especially look here. If I change it for the chain signal, it becomes red because the following signal is red. So what will happen here now is that the train will stop in front of the crossing, not blocking it. And the train from the side road can come and go on his business wherever he wants to go. So that's the importance of the crossings having a chain signal as the entry point and the block signal as the exit point. So that way the signals work in any shape of intersection, it doesn't have to be T-shape. Of course, this one we saw on the previous video, basic intersection for every station where we can place a decision point signal here. The entry points, oops, sorry, the entry signals are there, and then the exits obviously block. So you have a chain at a decision point. That's where you want the train to stop to decide which platform it's gonna use. Then you have a chain signals as an entry point to the actual crossing, and block signals as the exit. You have a three-platform station, same principle. I know some people had trouble with the three-platform station, but again, you can have the chain signals even like a few in a row. You can have one here and one here. This is a 
entry point to this crossing, this is entry point to this crossing, both should be chain signals. Same in the other direction. On this track is just one. And our decision point. <clears throat> and then of course all the exits need to be blocked signal I need to be the right direction here here and here and here this is how it is and if the station becomes too busy you can add another one it's virtually unlimited I mean there is a limit because you can have a maximum of uh, eight station eight by eight and you need one row for the actual station building so the maximum is a seven platforms but other than that uh, you can make it up to all seven platforms the same way and it will generally work. But the truth is that if the station is that busy, this will become too complex crossing and the trains will block there anyway, no matter the signals. So I think four is the most I've built and that's only rarely I usually have a Two I have in almost every city, but the three platform I still have it quite often, but mm, the four is rarely and I didn't build any more. So anyway, this formerly exit signal have become uh, entry one, so we have to make it chain. So here is another entry. And then there is a few exits. The extras there, and then our entry decision point. That's where you want the train to stop to choose platform. So, and I'm missing signals here. Look at that here and here. So there is a three chains in a row because we all want this to be read here if the platform is occupied, so the train doesn't cross the the crossings but that's exactly what could happen you know there is a situation which is not preventable by signals and you can do absolutely nothing about it train comes here all green train decides to go here it's coming it's coming and the moment it's about here another train comes from the opposite direction because the other train having exactly the same but mirror crossings there has the same green light but it was a little faster so it gets there sooner this turns red because that the uh, platform have be, has become occupied suddenly or the chains turn red but the train is already here and we can do nothing about it it stops here at the red light it blocks the exit lanes we can do nothing we just have to wait until the until the platform clears and uh, the train drives away so the only way if this happen if this is happening way too often that the, the best solution is just to delete erase all these exit points make it one way station put the exit on the other side and that it will work without this problem so the, the more trucks you have the more prone this crossing will be to this problem I just described. I have one more little error which happens quite often. This error is named not enough signals. This is intersection which is obviously not very busy coming from a depot, you know, once in the blue moon there is a train going and you have a trucks like this and you just either didn't want to put signal didn't think it's important or just simply forgot and there is not signals here well there is nothing coming nothing happens but the moment one and only and single train goes there is all it takes for the intersection to be completely blocked you see it cannot go anywhere It will be running like a crazy in and out, stop at the red light. It just cannot go anywhere because for the game, this all is just one block. All these trucks connected. So the, the game doesn't really know the train is, oh, it knows the train is here, but for it, the train could be sitting here, sitting here, sitting here, sitting here. It will be all the same because it's all one block. The whole block is occupied. So because the train could, connecting like this sitting be sitting here in a block that's why there is a red light so it is so-called self-block 
and a train is blocked forever until you fix it by placing proper signals where they should be, like here, and here, and here. Now it's going to work. So really, that's the error is not enough signals, and that's what happens when people don't place signal on every piece of track, on every intersection, then it leads to this self blocks. Okay, guys, so that's all for today. You have a great evening or good morning or whatever is the time where you watch this video. And I will talk to you again soon. I think my next video will be much shorter and it will be about the railroad crossings. So enjoy the game and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.